Hey, it's Chris with Look Mondo Hands. Today we're taking a radical departure from my normal, normal format. I told you I'd talk about technology, and one of the things that we're going to discuss today is uh, my camera. Is, is what we use. Um, we the, the Canon T2i is a fantastic DSLR, uh, not only for taking pictures, but for doing video. And the problem with, with it, though, is that when you're taking video, it tends to overheat. Um, the reason for that is, is you've got your battery right here, which is also right by your memory and your memory card, which is the, the, the drive that the camera uses. As both of these things are used, the memory card heats up, the battery heats up, and the entire camera will overheat and shut down. Um, we have found that using an external battery system actually has prevented that. I've never had this camera over overheat uh, because I built a battery system immediately after I got it. Um, my, partner's, my partner's still on the small batteries and I'm going to take advantage of this today to actually make a battery system so you guys can see how, and that way he doesn't have to swap out. Uh, the advantages are A, it doesn't overheat, B, these small Canon batteries actually get about an hour and a half of recording time, and that's from the time you start it up to the time it shuts down. That's not just, you know, that's not solid recording, that's in the entire time. And as you know, uh, if you're doing any decent video, setting up can take, you know, quite a bit of time. So on set, we'll go through five to seven batteries in a standard day. And because of the, where the battery is, and the uh, standard tripod for filming has a large foot, that, that wastes about an hour a day. So, um, what we've done is we've taken that small battery system, and I am making an adapter to go from this to this. It is an external battery. I could, well, I could probably jam it in there, but the camera wouldn't be happy. But this gets about an hour and a half, and we actually shot 17 hours one day with one of these, and I actually have three of these. So what I'm doing, and I'm going to show you how, is how to adapt your, cam your camera, and you don't actually have to make any modifications to your camera um, to run off of one of these. Um, I'm pretty sure, I haven't done the research, but I'm pretty sure that if you look at the Nikon battery system, I'm willing to bet it's 7.4 volts, and if so, that'll, that'll work for, this will work for the entire thing. Um, what you need, I can guarantee that this will work for all of the Canon D-series cameras though. Um, what you're going to need is, of course, a D-series camera. Um, I use the T2i, which is the 550D. Um, there's a lot of people out there that use the Canon 5D, and I know they have the same problem. They'll buy that the, the battery base, which holds two batteries, so they get three hours out of it. But with this, with this system, that'll still run about 11 to 12 hours. Um, you, need to get the, you need to get your camera. The next thing you need to get is an AC adapter. Um, I just bought a, well, a, a, a $15 one off Amazon.com. The AC adapter comes with a cord, a converter, and then this neat, neat little thing. Um, as you can see, it looks exactly like one of the batteries, except for the fact that the AC cord plugs into the side and then goes out the side of the camera. What we're going to do is we're going to take this AC adapter, we're going to cut the lead wire, and I'm going to splice in a connector. Um, I personally use high-end uh, RC car connectors because these are made to hold and take a lot of amp amperage very fast, much more than the camera will do, and they're designed to hold very strongly. The ones we're using here are labeled the XT60, but uh, and as you can see, I've already done that on the battery. I'm not going to show you how to adapt the battery today, but I can tell you it's the same basic thing. I will tell you one thing about this. Um, you need to mar you need to decide which you know which side is going to be which. In my case, in my case, I went with the red on the flat side. You keep keep in mind on that because you have positive, negative, hot positive, negative ground, and that's going to be important when you when you get to your actual work work on the on the uh, adapter. When you cut these leads, 
cut one, solder the next one, then cut the other, and solder the next, uh, solder that one. Because otherwise, you will shock yourself. There is no question. Trust me on this. Um, the tools you're going to need for this. Soldering iron. I use a soldering gun because it heats up fast, cools down fast, and I can do my work without, without having to worry about burning anything down. Pull the trigger, and it's on. You can tell. Um, you will need solder. I use, I use a solid core and resin. You can get rosin core solder, but I actually prefer to go with, with, the, with, the, so, with the solid re rosin. That way I've got a little more control, and as it burns off, it helps help suck the solder in. You will need wire cutters and strippers. I personally recommend a set like this because it does everything, um, but if you have to, you can use scissors. You just have to be incredibly careful because if you short across these, even though it's only 7.4 volts, it, they are quite powerful batteries, and there will be a spark, and you can get burned. Um, the, when I was wiring up one of these batteries, because I'd completely forgotten that the battery was live, I cut both the, both the terminals and shocked the crap out of myself. And I still have a scar from the burn where it melted part of the lead. Um, I recommend one of these two things, either sandpaper or a wire brush. And this is because you'll get oxidation on the tip of your soldering iron. Um, if you're using a soldering iron, you should already know this, this stuff. Um, on a difficulty level, since you are using a specialized tool, I would say that this is probably a 7 or 8. Um, I also use a sponge with water to scrub that off. You will need this. This is shrink tubing. You can get it for about $1.99 uh, for a yard. This is what makes it look professional. Oh, I've misplaced that battery. It's behind the behind. backpack. There we go. That's what makes this look so professional. It also helps protect and this is much better than using electrical tape. Once it's on, you put that on on your wire before you solder, then you slide it off, and you use a lighter very carefully to heat up the shrink tube. Or if you have a heat gun or a really hot hair dryer, that'll shrink it as well. Um, I don't, I, I don't use those things, so I use this thing. Um, I recommend having a pair of scissors for that and for any extraneous stuff. Um, the other tool that I need is my helping hands, which I have not gotten down, um, and I'll show you those here in just a second. Um, important thing, you will need a battery charger. Um, you, when you order your batteries, you can get them from any RC car company. You're going to want a 7.4 volt uh, lithium polymer, polymer or, or nickel metal hydrate. Um, this specific uh, battery charger was about 20 bucks. You do have to buy... Uh, an AC adapter, but this thing will will charge both uh, lithium-ion and uh, polymer batteries, which are very, which is very nice. Mo most of them will only do one or the other. This also handles a lot of different, uh, a lot of different battery types. But 7.4 volts, and that's because that's what the camera runs on. Um, now, when you do this, you will lose your battery meter on the camera, but trust me when I tell you, you won't need it. Um, we have only run one of these batteries drive once, and that was after a day of shooting, I didn't charge up, and we ran with the same battery the next day just to see. And after, after a 13-hour day, we got another three or four hours out of the battery. So if you're, if you're going through more than one, you're doing some serious stuff. Um, I'm going to grab the helping hands, and I'll be right back. This little guy has a helping hand. Um, you can get him for about 20 bucks from, uh, from Radio Shack. I got mine off of Amazon for about seven. It's got a weighted base, articulated hands, and this allows you to, um, well, basically to hold your items in the in the grip, hold your soldering iron and your solder, so you can basically have two sets of hands. Um, if you're doing anything with electronics, you need one of these. If you don't have it this time, um, I have used hemostats and cardboard boxes in the past jab the hemostats in there and, and use it to hold. Um, I've used that, I've used silly putty, I've used wet clay, and at one point in time I super glued a pair of hemostats to my leg to hold on to some stuff because, I was, because we were in a fix on set. These are the most important thing you will ever have for electronics. So, let's get started.
Now this next step, which is technically part of step one, but it's part of it is step one A, we'll say. Um, you need to do what's known as tinning the tips uh, of your wires. Um, this involves uh, heating up the wires to the point where the solder gets get, gets sucked up into them. That is that's a preparatory step that most people don't realize. They just take the, the wire and stick it down in there. Tinning the tips allow, allows you to uh, have it ready for connection, and when you when you get to your connector, you have the minimum.